Hey everybody, welcome to the show, I'm Joe, and today we're gonna to be talking about homestead cows in the winter. Ins and outs, what do you feed them, how much do you water them, shelter systems, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. We're with Mark from Baker's Green Acres and we're gonna be covering all that and more. This is the Anyone Can Farm Experience. Okay, we're gonna show you some things about beef production. Uh, before I do that though, I gotta go take, take care of the pigs. All right, let's go feed some cows. But nothing ever stopped me from dusting off my shoes. You might think you'll see me falling to the ground. But I threw up my umbrella when rain stopped sitting down. Yeah. On a bad day, on a good day. Is, uh, a fairly mild winter day, but we do have snow on the ground and uh, we are expecting some snow to come. And we wanted to do a little bit of information about cows and winter. Cows and snow, cows and ice, cows and just cold temperatures in general. Um, it's really not that complicated. I think we have to override our human emotions you know, that, that we, we think about our dogs being out in cold weather and how, gee, that's just terrible. Shouldn't they be inside where it's warm? But actually, uh, we have to know the, the reality of, of the species. So what you have here is a, a bovine. Uh, they eat grass, so they have a massive stomach and it's like a huge compost pile and their, their temperature regulation system can heat their body up just as hot as it needs to be to counter the uh, climactic conditions outside. Behind the cameraman here is a really nice barn. It's been there for a long time. It's got a big open door on it and there's what's called the loafing area where these guys have access to the barn. They can go in if they want and I suppose it's warmer in there than it is outside. But so long as they have a little bit of bedding on the ground that gives them a little bit of insulation from the ground, they're fine being outside. And outside is where they choose to be. The only time that they go in the barn is when it gets really hot in the summertime, or the flies are really bad, or it's raining. They don't like getting rained on, right? They just, they don't like the sensation of it. It's not that they get cold, but they just don't like being rained on, so they will go in the barn then. But in the wintertime, on the coldest day, I will come out and put a little bedding out for them, and they'll just all snuggle down on it, and they're just as happy as they can be. But you can see over here is a really good example. Those cows are laying down where the last male was, right? There's a little bit of bedding there, and that's where they're gonna lay down on. If there isn't something like that out here, I'll provide it for them. It's not hard. You just bring out a, a bucket full of straw and drop it, and rake it out a little bit. And that's all they need. Animals are not actually grain eaters. These are grass eaters. They were designed to eat grass. So these animals have gotten to where they are now, and these, there's a lot of meat out here. Uh, it, that is all from grass, and then this time of the year, there's snow on the ground, so I'm feeding them hay, which is grass that we've dried and baled and stored in the barn for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't supplement with grain throughout the winter no. whatsoever? No, no, not these guys. Uh, the milk cows get a little bit. We just processed one a uh, short time ago, and the fat on the inside of the animal was phenomenal. You know, just lots and lots of fat still. And 
I guess we're, you'd say, you know, we're into February now, so we've still got two more months of winter. And that's good that they still have a, a good, good supply of fat to live off of. You know, this is not exactly a fat builder, but it'll help them to maintain, you know, what they have. Okay, so I'm in inside right now. This is our little milking parlor. And we use this location to water in the winter months. So uh, during this time of the year, the, all of our ponds are frozen over. There's really no water available to the cows, so I have to provide it for them. Um, there's a couple challenges, but I'm going to show you how we overcome them. Having it inside really helps a lot because it's a few degrees warmer in here. And uh, if it was sitting out in the wind, you know, it takes any heat that's in the water off very quickly and the water freezes. And that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to, it's supposed to freeze like that. Um, my source of water is in another building. And I run a hose up here every day. So this is about 250 gallons that are in this tank. This is just an IBC tote that we've cut off. I have used this tote for at least five years. And it shows very little wear. <laughs> so it's a good cheap way to, uh, to contain some water that you want to feed your cattle in the wintertime. And then to keep it from freezing, we have this heater in here and here comes Moonbeam she's coming in to get a little something to drink this is a tank heater you see a little bit of steam coming off of there now and I'm not gonna leave it out of the water because I don't want it to overheat it doesn't make a whole lot of heat it's just enough to keep this water above 32 degrees so it's not like you will put your hand in this water and you'll you'll feel warmth it still feels very cold it just will not allow it to ice up at least not thick ice some mornings when we have extreme cold you know i'm talking 10 below we might have a skiff of ice on top of here and uh you know we'll break the ice there she goes taking a drink good girl You are such a good girl. And this heater in the tank, it's no concern to the cows. They could care less. Um, we're going to keep the cord, keep the profile of the cord as low as we can so they don't see it as something that they can fool around with. Because they're mischievous like little kids, you know. If they, hey, look at I got a cord and they'll pull on it until they get a shock. And we don't want that. That's how I do it. It's simple. I, try, I like to keep it simple. And this way I also get a chance to really get an idea of how much water is needed for 10 cows. You need a lot of water. A whole lot of water. 10 gallons. I mean, when you think about Two, five gallon carrying, carrying 10 gallons every day, yeah. like in two five-gallon buckets, like that's a lot and that's per cow. Per cow. That's a lot of water. It'd be a lot of trips. Yeah. So it makes a device like a like a hose. You you realize how important <laughs> that device is if you have to carry buckets of water up here for them. And I, you know I don't. And it's just a few months that we have to do this. Uh, in the summertime, for me to make way for them to get to a pond to drink. I realize how much work goes into getting water to them. So I see a pond as a great asset. You know, when you're grazing cattle and they have a pond that they can go and drink, drink at, that's a great asset because there's just so much water that they go through. Um, it also helps me to understand the importance of our well, right? Our well is pulling up 250 gallons of water a day just for them. And then our needs at the house as well. Uh, so, you know, the infrastructure that, that's around the well and the work that we put into making sure the well is taken care of and heated and, and looked after, it's pretty important. It's probably one of the more important components 
on a farm in any kind of production, whether it's milk production or beef production, water is so, so important. All right, there you have it, folks. As you can probably tell, it's not super complicated, but you do need to know what you're doing. Cows are really self-reliant animals. You give them food, water, and shelter, and they're, you know, they're generally pretty happy. So I have this one right behind me, like pushing, pushing his head at me. Hey, go on, get out of here. All right, so anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video. It was really fun to make. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Both those things really help the algorithms. You know, we put a lot of work into this content and uh, it helps to know that you guys are appreciating it and enjoying it. We will catch you guys in the next video. If you're interested at all at about the um, rotational grazing that we do on the farm, go ahead, click this video right here and we will catch you guys in the next one.